over here! So, yeah, take take what we say, like we said, take, take what we say with a grain of salt, guys, because it's like, this is just our opinion and nothing more. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think you're doing anything morally wrong if you like Camilla. Oh, absolutely not, but at the same time, like, I guess when it comes to Comic Foil and I, we don't mind sexy characters. We don't mind, like, uh... Oscar, we don't, we don't, Oscar really doesn't mind oh, sexy trust characters. Me, like, anyone who follows me on Twitter <laughs> knows full well my stance on that. There has to be a reason for it, though. And as long as, like, if if you want to have the char a character be sexy, okay, fine. But give yeah, them agency. Power to you. I just, yeah, as long as there's... As long as there's agency. And it's okay for something to be hot just for the sake of being hot. That is, like, a market. Yeah. But again, it's like, I guess it really depends. Like, I guess that, I guess part of me also, like, there's this game, you probably know about this game, Senran Kagura. Yeah. Yeah, that is fan service up the wazoo. But they play it up for laughs as well, and that I can kind of get behind as well. Because at the very least, they're being like, oh yeah, we know that, we, we know exactly what we're doing with this. I mean, I haven't played it, so I can't speak for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, these kinds of things really only bother me when I start to feel like they're interfering with the character or interfering with the narrative. Yeah, and I will say this much, when it comes to Senran Kagura, there's not really much of a ca much character to be had. Not that they're bad characters or anything, but really this is just a game where a bunch of like uh, a bunch of like shinobi ninja uh, ninja girls in scantily clad outfits are beating the crap out of each other. There's not much character to be had. Yeah. So I don't mind it as much there. And then we get to and then we get to characters like in Danganronpa 2 with Mikan. I freaking hate me. I hate me. I hate me. Like, so much. It, like if you guys want a poster girl example or a poster example of doing fan service wrong, me from Dong and Rampa too. Enough said. I despise that character. My, my thing with me there's like I a know, fetish what do you have? around. It is a sleep staff. Okay. okay. Cause it's like a fetish for, they, they do a lot of like, they tease a lot of Henka. Hentai with yeah. Mikan. Yeah, they do. And it's like, ugh. And, I don't know. And it, if you played Danganronpa 2, I guess it's a little bit more complicated than than this, I'll admit. But, like, anytime they're doing that with Mikan, she's always like, no, don't look at me, don't look at me, while the camera, like, focuses in on all her parts. And, like, I it's feel horrible for playing the game in it's, that moment. It's, it's squicky as hell. Like, that's, like, anti-agency. Like, the character does not want to be sexualized, and it's sexualizing her. Exactly. Now, some people argue that Mikan actually does want to be sexualized, and she's doing this on purpose. Yeah, but by that point, the ship has sailed, That's guys. a character study, but it just makes me deeply uncomfortable. Uh, honestly, that gets into some, that gets into some, like, that, that, if you wanted to sell that with Mikan, great. But some dramatic irony yeah. would have been nice. Like, maybe there was something about Mikan that the audience knew that the characters don't, and then it would have made a whole... It would have been done a whole lot better. But they gave us none of that. that that's one of the... That's where I start to be like, hey, if this is how you get your kicks, you know, I don't want to shame you, but maybe just, like, kind of check yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like... Okay. I'm not Th saying you definitely have problems, but maybe just, like... I'm going... I'm reaffirm, do a quick self-mental check. I was actually... I'm actually... I was actually having a conversation with Sheikah and, uh, Amber. Yeah. And, like, about some of this. And Zach, who some of my audience know as Silk Investors, we actually had a bit of a conversation about this, and this is going to get into some little bit of squeaky territory, just a warning, guys. Okay. But... How, how did we get here? Oh, my God. Okay. Um, because we were talking... Because we were talking about strong, uh, female characters and Lola Bunny, and, yeah. like, it just kind of spiraled from there. Yeah. But I'm gonna put it to you this way, guys. Like, if you like your sexy-ass characters, and, like, you know... Because I do, too! Like, I'm going to say right out, I do, too. No more power to you. That being said, there are certain boundaries that we don't want to cross, at least publicly. I am I am perfectly okay if, like, going to Pokemon for a moment, because Pokemon Sword and Shield is a perfect example of this. Okay. Going to Pokemon for a moment, if you want to, if you want to, like, you know, sexualize your Nessas and your Melanies and, like, you know, even, like, if you swing the other way, like, your Raihans and your Peers, great, more power to you. If you start going towards Marnie, I'm gonna have an issue. Yeah, Marnie's, uh... Marnie's underage, people. She is underage. Come on. Like, Pokemon Sword and Shield is a... Has a smorgasbord of waifus and husbandos that you can choose, and you chose Marnie? And I... Ugh. Yeah, that... Yeah, that's when we're gonna start having an issue. And a lot of people, when they do art of stuff like that, like... 
imagine a continuity where she's older or like, oh, I'm drawing her, but she's older in my art. But sometimes they're not doing that. Exactly. It's and like, look, if you're going to make the character older, okay, sure, put some effort into it. Actually make them look older. Age them up. Put them in a different outfit or whatever. Just like... But even then, it's still kind of questionable, if I'm being honest. It's like, yes, if, if you're into this kind of thing, if this is how you get your kicks, great. But there are some lines that are getting a little bit iffy, and that's when we are like, okay, maybe get this guy on a watch list. Yeah. How did we get on this conversation? Oh, we got reincru reinforcements. Okay, going. let's just get back to the battle, shall yeah. we? I've just been going. I've just been going at it. If I'm being honest. Um, yeah, feel they're free. just at, they're just axemen. I just want to have Ike take care of these guys. Yeah, have Ike um, and Volk can open that other chest. Because mm -hmm. Volk is Volk is gonna get trapped in here if those guys uh, advance. I want to say these conversations are never like completely black and white. They're oh, they're not. They're not. So if you have thoughts, you know, absolutely feel free to comment them. Oh, by all means, like you. I, I will read a good number of them. Like Comic Foil and I are just two guys, and this is just our opinion and our take on how this is supposed to be. Like, and these are two sides of, like, these are two different sides of this conversation going on here. Like, John is not into lewd stuff by any stretch of the imagination, at least from what I, no. as far as I'm concerned. And me, I'm totally into it. But I, I don't talk about it very much, but I am actually asexual. Um, <laughs> wait, really? <laughs> yeah, I never talk about it. I didn't know this. No, I'm actually, um, like, like, kind of taking my first public announcement of it, like, right now. But yeah, I'm ace. <laughs> I mean, sorry if I, like, do, do you want me to, like, block that out or something? No, no, or? it's fine. It was, it was, it was, it was coming event. I, I've, been, I've been kind of building up to talking about it, because it's not a big deal. It doesn't change who I am. Yeah, obviously. It's um, like, but, but, hey, good on you, man. Yeah. Yeah, um, like, and... It's something I claim that I, I don't claim very much, because... Okay, so the thing about asexuals... Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a blanket term. It really is. Because... Some people, some people who are asexual, one, there's a difference between asexual and aromantic. Yes. Um, I am still romantic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and two, some asexuals will still have sex sometimes, and some um, will not, mm -hmm. and some are sex repulsed. And the, the, the real important thing is that it's just it's not a big particular motivator for yeah, you, and there's is. different levels of it. Um, Ileana! Nice. Jesus! Well, okay. She really wants. She really wants to be off the bench. Sorry, I, sorry, no, I didn't no, mean to interrupt cool. you. But yeah, go on. Um, sorry, this has been a journey I've been on for the past few years. But uh, mm -hmm. no, I understand. Uh, um, so it's something that I, I guess I t tend not to claim very much because I don't want to sound like I'm just asking for attention. Yeah, of course. Like I'm also hetero, and I'm also like married to mm -hmm. a woman who I love very much and am very attracted to. Of course. Um, and I, like, I guess I anticipate all these questions that I don't really want to deal with. No, I, I get um, that. I get that. But, like, I... I guess just I don't... I never wanted to claim claim it from I never wanted to claim that term from people who are ace who like maybe have more challenges being ace than I do mm -hmm. I guess is why I don't tend to bring it up very much oh you and I are gonna have a conversation after this because it's actually this is actually quite interesting and honestly like I my opinion in the, on that regard is just more power to you dude yeah like, and, you, and as you far and as I know other people who are ace and not like not that it's a context not that it's a contest, but are, like, more ace than I am. Yeah, and even then, it's not necessarily, like, a... If I may be... If I may be so bold in, in saying something that might uh, be a little bit... Uh, I wouldn't call it insulting, but maybe it's just how I feel about it. Okay. I mean, we could talk about it. It's a conversation. Yeah. Honestly, in, in my personal view... Being ace is not as big a deal as people sh people make it out I to be. I don't think it is a big deal, and I don't I want really, it to be a big deal. I don't. I don't really think it is either. Like, I don't think it is a bit as big a deal as people make it out to be, and I don't think it should be because it's like, okay, you're asexual. Then, like, obviously that's a blanket term, but it's like, okay, you're not into you're not into uh, you're not into having sex, or like, you know, you're not into this, this, or that, but you still want to be romantic, or you don't want to be romantic, or you want to be alone, or there's like. Okay, whatever. At the end of the day, it's you do you, man. Yeah. It's like you live your life the way you want to. Like I don't, I don't, I honestly, I fail to understand. And this is after the fact that like I've kind of did some growing up over the past years. Like you know how I was before, but 
yeah, it really is not as big a deal as it... Uh, it really shouldn't be as big a deal as it is. Yeah. In my opinion. So, honestly, dude, like, more power to you. Thank you. I'm um, actually, I'm actually, like, I, I learned something new about my best friend. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's not like I was ever trying to, like, keep it from you. It's just it, a never... I, I know. It, it's it, not it, a it, thing it, about myself I talk about it, it, a lot. It, just, it, was, it was just never brought up. Or, like, you know, that kind of thing. And I, I do understand why some people have a little bit of hesitation talking about it because it's not exactly li like everyone has different reasons for being ace if they are ace and yeah. some and different people have different reasons for not talking about it and that's perfectly yeah, fine. i don't know why i am i just am like that i like i in your case from what i'm to understand it doesn't it sounds less like you didn't want to talk about it more just like it never it was never brought it, up it never came up yeah uh -huh. and i'm not one person to just like start talking about random things about themselves exactly so. Exactly. So, yeah, no, that, that, there you go, people. Yeah. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, on a very special episode of Path mm -hmm. of Radiance. <laughs> now, so I guess that's why, like, I never really get super into the waifu thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, recently I kind of, like, had this moment on Twitter where, like, enough was enough and, like, I really just wanted to stop seeing NSFW stuff yeah, on my no, wall. Yeah, I, I, did, I did see that. And not anything against people who like that. Uh -huh. um, it, it's just like not everyone wants to see that. But right? it was just kind of starting to bother me in a way I didn't want to be quiet about anymore. Yeah, but, no, um, that makes sense. Uh, okay, for us there is no tomorrow. We cannot be beaten, nor can we withdraw. We must defeat the Crimean army and bring his majesty back to us. Alright, do it, Oscar. I like Kassatai. He's, um, he's, like, just kind of on the wrong side of this, but he's not a bad guy. He, you get a feel for, like, him being scared and desperate. Yeah. Way to go, Oscar, though. I didn't know he was going to move. That scared me a little. That that actually is the reason I put Oscar there. Because, like, I was like, okay, is this guy going to move or not? And I decided to test it, and it worked out perfectly. Nice one, Ike! Hey, speaking of Ace, I'm pretty sure Ike is such. You know, I used to always think of him as gay, and while we were doing this playthrough, and you presented, maybe he's ace, and I'm like, huh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like, the dude's not really interested in that. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't go so far as to say he's aromantic, at least not yet anyway. Goodness! But, yeah, no, like, the, the thing is, like, I compare Ike to a lot of other lords in the franchise, and he's, like, one of the very few, if not the only one, who has zero interest in romance. You could argue that fictional characters... Are ace until proven otherwise. Until proven otherwise. Yeah, like the, the same kind of like situ we were talking about this last chapter. Yeah. It was like uh, it was the same thing with uh, with uh, Star Wars and like CS. Uh, oh, wait, not, not CS. So it's uh, uh, yeah, Luke Skywalker, uh, Mark yeah, Hamill. Yeah, exact. Mark Hamill. Thank you. And uh, it was like, uh, I mean, hey, if you want to believe this, then great. Then he totally is. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's it's true. Like, it's this until otherwise proven, up, or until proven otherwise, or whatever. Or people used to ask Steven Hillenburg all the time if Spongebob was gay. And it was Steven Hillenburg's opinion that Spongebob was ace. Interesting. He was like, Spongebob is a children's cartoon and sex is never going to come up. This is not a sexual character. That is true. Um... I will argue, however, that, um, he's not, like, I will, I would argue, however, that he is not a romantic. One, for, one, for one, he fell in love with a Krabby Patty that one episode, but we don't talk about that episode. <laughs> I mean, but, <clears throat> it's also a cartoon with dubious relationship to logic. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> But um, there was actually this one situation that I ran into a little while ago, and I'm going to drop a nostalgia ball on anyone who might relate to this. Um, I had a little book uh, during my childhood called The SpongeBob Survival Guide. Okay. Do you know this? No. Okay, so The SpongeBob Survival Guide was a book, like, it was like some sort of like weird book about like all the SpongeBob characters offering advice on what to do in, like, certain situations and whatnot, and it was all very specific. And, uh, there was this one segment in the, uh, in the thing where Spongebob was giving romance advice. Like, uh, how to ask, a how to ask a girl out and whatnot, right? Okay. And, uh, he was like, uh, you know, he was like, be respectful, uh, be confident, and don't fog up your bubble helmet. Wait, no, stop. D forget about that last part. And it's like it, that, that. Don't fog up your. Don't fog up your bubble. Helmet. Okay, that's not what I heard at first. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't even want to know what you thought, but anyway. 
But no, it was... That whole segment was heavily implying that Spongebob had a crush on Sandy Cheeks. I mean... Which it's, I think it's, it's, it's very easy to make that yeah. reading. But, like, that was the moment where I was like, you know... That's pretty much... Yeah, that pretty much confirms it. But anyway. I cannot stop your march. But we are not yet defeated. General Anna, protect the capital. So this has been a very perfect set of circumstances where it's like, Ileana's kind of like wrecking shop right now. Yeah. Um, and she's gonna be in a good position, I think, to fight Anna. Yeah, I think so too. Look I, at that. I don't already think... level nineteen. Yeah, she's not gonna have the damage output to solo her, but she'll do a good job because Anna doesn't have a ranged option. Does she not? Nope. Her her breath is her breath is. Oh snap! You would think, right? You would think it would be a ranged weapon, but it's not. You, you would think that they would think of that! Yeah. Weird, right? Huh. We ran into this issue in the in the early game, but I kind of brushed it off as like, oh, it's the early game, so, like, you know, no big deal. But are they really that dumb? I don't want to call them dumb, but, you know, it, it's... It that, seems that, like a missed that is opportunity. A, that is a gross oversight. Like, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use the bright bow here. So, you know, though, in... Support of SpongeBob's theory of, of liking Sandy. Yeah. And this could still just be him being not aromantic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but still asexual. But we know that when Big Larry came by just to put him down, SpongeBob turned into a clown. And he was very sad because no girl ever wants to dance. With a girl who went... With a fool who, oh, went, a fool and who went and ripped, ripped his, his pants. pants. Yeah, no, it was pretty heavily implied that, like, Spongebob really, really the, likes The motivation Sandy. of that episode is very that he wants Sandy to pay attention to him. Yeah. Um, and it's the same kind of, the first episode... Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh nice! Oh my gosh, that's just like in the GBA! That is, that is basically like, the GBA. Yeah, like, he, he, he holds it back, twirls it, and then does the... Wow! Cool! Way to go, Boyd! Uh, Look at the brothers working together. The first episode that has Sandy in it, um, where he, where he's pretending he doesn't have a problem being in the tree dome, where he's like he won't admit that he needs water. Right. And you could also say that's because like he's trying to impress her, and maybe it's because she's a cute girl. I don't know. Uh huh. Um, you could definitely look at it that way. I met this girl. She wears a head full of air. Are you saying she puts on airs? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> That's just fancy talk. If you want to be fancy, hold your pinky up like this. The higher you hold it, the fancier you are. Like this? Higher. Like that? Perfect! They should call you SpongeBob Fancy Pants! Oh my god. You have no idea, guys, how good Oscar is at, like, these recitations. Um, like, he has, like, an eidetic memory for scenes. I, like... I, I keep telling Amber, I'm a walking, talking tape recorder. Yeah. Like, really, like... I, I've actually been wanting to do an episode, or, like, a video where, I, like, I blindfold myself, someone tells me to randomly recite something that I might know, and then it's like... And then it's like, I just do it. That'd be fun. Like, with no script or anything. That could be a fun <clears throat> challenge, or, like... Like, obviously, I don't remember everything. I've ha I haven't watched every single thing out there. Yeah. But if it's some sort of, like, me... A safe bet is, like, video game quotes or, like, Disney or Pixar movies and whatnot. Or things like that. Uh, oh, right. Vogue's still all the way down there. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna have to... We're, we might be a little slow here, unfortunately. Yeah. But you can move, so... Um, let's have... Let's have a... Well, before I... Oh, we can break the doors! If we wanted to. Oh, I guess we can. We can't... We can't break the chest, but we can break the doors. Yeah. Okay, so you got a shine that can uh, reach from afar. So, missed. With the Sonic Sword equipped. And Kieran, right here with the Tomahawk equipped. Everyone else, stand by. Speaking of um, some less fortunate news in SpongeBob related. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Sleep. That's that's a little annoying. I think I think Reese might have a restore staff. No, he doesn't. No, <laughs> we traded that around. I think that ended up in the convoy. Yeah. Damn. Oh well, it's just something we're gonna have to deal with. Um, have you seen the adverts for the SpongeBob spinoffs? 
Yeah, I've Plural. seen that. And I'm like, what? It's just sad because we know Steven Hillenburg, may rest in peace, specifically didn't want this to happen to his creation. You, you want to know what? It's not to, not to sound like... Uh, not to sound pretentious or anything, but um, it's kind of giving me vibes of what happened with Ruby. With W B Y? W yeah, R -W -B -Y Ruby. Ruby. Like, after, after Mon... Oof! After Montione passed away. I didn't know he did pass away. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, Montione passed away, like, a while ago. Oh, like, my, years ago. My condolences, Internet. Sorry. Yeah, but no, he's, uh, uh, he... I think... I don't remember what it was, but yeah, he's been passed away for a while since, like, Ruby Season 3, and now we're in, like, Season 7, I think. That kind of explains a lot. Okay. Yeah, see what I mean? <laughs> you, you see what I mean? I was never a huge Ruby fan, but that, like, explains a lot. Yeah, because, like, I, I, I've made it no secret that I am not a fan of the direction that uh, Ruby has uh, has uh, gone to uh, lately. And uh, Just I'll... be careful of this javelin. Mm -hmm. um, sh yeah, she should be all right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Boom. But, yeah, like, I, I've made it no secret that, like, I don't like the direction that Ruby has gone. Um, for several reasons, mind you. And yeah, the same can be said about the Spongebob franchise, to be honest, because, it was, like, somewhere in the middle after... Honestly, I think after the Spongebob Squarepants movie, things started to go downhill. The first Spongebob Squarepants movie? Yeah. That... Yeah, that's the general consensus. Mm -hmm. I, I heard it kind of crashed and then came back a little bit, but not quite as high as in its heyday. Hmm. Yeah, breaking down doors. Yeah, these doors are uh, sturdy. Mm. I wouldn't have used a uh, sonic sword on that, but okay. There we go. One sonic sword charges all right. Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, and also, like, I know I'm not the target demographic anymore. I'm 30, but, mm -hmm. like, does Camp Coral look good to anybody? No, not really. Is anybody looking at this and being like, oh, yeah. It's like, just, do we really, is this something we really need? Um, like, w when do spinoffs work like this? When do spinoffs of TV shows work? Especially the Patrick Star sh show. This has the Cleveland show written all over it. Um, if I may be so bold in saying, Penguins of Madagascar. Uh, yeah, never a property I really cared about was good. Um, the Penguins of Madagascar TV spinoff was actually pretty good. Shockingly. Okay. Like, like that's just an example, mind you. But yeah, that was one spinoff that I actually thought was good. I also think you need to consider... The reason why the Patrick Star show reminds me of the Cleveland show is you're taking a side character who I think really isn't built to carry stories on their own. Mm-hmm. Nice. Beautiful. Um, and Cleveland was that, and I think Patrick was that. I don't think Patrick... Like, Patrick had episodes dedicated to him, yeah. but that was all he needed. Yeah. Patrick's a foil to Spongebob. Yeah. I don't know how he's gonna work on his own, and Cleveland was a foil to Peter Griffin. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen some of the Cleveland show, and it's not terrible, but it was... But it screamed not needed, if I may be honest. Yeah. I mean, I respect, I guess, that, you know, it's, like, getting more black characters out there. I mean, that's great and all, but, again... I, I just think... it it I don't mean that it can never work, ever, but the initial concept of it is kind of flawed, so you're kind of... It's kind of an uphill battle to exactly, make it Exactly, exactly. Or... Ooh, does anybody remember Planet Sheen? Yeah, I, I, I think I think Kieran's uh, current mood right now pretty much explains how <laughs> I feel about that. We don't talk about Planet Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Screw, no, like, you won't. Screw, screw this, screw this sage, or screw this uh, monk who mentioned Planet Sheen. We don't talk about that. You guys all repressed Planet Sheen. You convinced yourself it didn't happen, but it did. Oh my god, that was real. That 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 was a can of worms in and of itself. Man, like, and I, oh my god, and I love Sheen as a character, but talk about a bad premise. Oh my lord, that was Planet Sheen was. Uh, how do how do how do I put this eloquently? Planet Sheen is like Planet Sheen is like the packing peanuts um of a uh, the, pa the packing peanuts in a package that I ordered off of Amazon that I like to play with for a little bit but then I just toss them. Planet Sheen is this era of Nickelodeon where Nickelodeon really needs to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not a fan of it. I haven't watched enough so so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Fanboy and Chum Chum is like an amazing show, but oh uh, my gosh, can't make it through the intro. Yeah, no, I can't. I couldn't either. Like, what were they thinking? That show made me feel so old. <laughs> that was like my biggest like, is this what the kids are into? Moment. Uh, you want to know what? I get that from Teen Titans Go. Yeah, Teen Guy Teen Titans Go is a weird beast. Uh. The, the thing is, like, I have a complicated relationship with Teen Titans Go, because on the one hand, no. Like, everything about the show, for the most part, just makes me mad. And I, then the I almost respect it for just how unapologetic it is. And then the movie comes out, and it had no right to be as good as it was. Like, all of a sudden, the movie for Teen Titans Go comes out, and all of a sudden, there's all these smart choices, and all of these really, really interesting, like, ideas, and all these nods to, like, a different, like, DC continuity that they just completely roast to yeah. hell. And I'm like, why am I laughing? Why am I enjoying this? I can kind of get behind the irreverence of Teen Titans Go. Um, or just how... I have a soft spot for pieces of art that are, like actively antagonistic against you for watching it. That's one way to put it. That, that's like, I don't know why, that's my jam. Like, like, Papers, Please and stuff like that. Papers, Please is an interesting concept. Like, I remember watching one of Rapid Luigi's videos about games that are not fun to play. Yeah. And Papers, Please is a perfect example of that. Like, it's not fun, but it's meant to not be fun. And the way it does it is brilliant. Or like those moments in old Paper Mario game. Ooh, oh, ooh, that's a good item. That's By the nice. way, we never addressed this. What does parody do? Um, that's a great question. Let me I, I, I don't remember what parody does. Um, so while you're looking that up, I'm gonna continue forward. We got a mage here, uh, with an elf under spell. Is there anyone with, like, crazy ranged spells that I need to be aware of? I don't think so. Ugh, Nephany's asleep! Ugh, she's just gonna have to stay behind, unfortunately. Yeah. Man, we got into some conversations today, dude. Yeah, I like it. I like I like it too. I'm just like a little bit like astonished at what like topics we covered today. <laughs> <laughs> it was maybe a little more political than usual. No, you wanna know what? This is a result of this is a result of this is exactly what happens when you and I don't talk for a good long while and now suddenly we have to do an episode. Oh yeah, like like the dam clogged up. Like for real and, though. And now we like, all of a sudden, like, we have so much to talk about. <laughs> Call us General Shaharam, because we just opened the floodgates. God damn it, no! <laughs> Absolutely not! <laughs> and you're all going to suffer for it. <laughs> let, let, let this be a testament as to how much I love this guy. Uh, in Path of Radiance, I love you too. In Path of Radiance, this skill has nothing of particular value, but can find use in the... No, what does it do? I, I don't want your opinion, Wiki. What does it do? Negates both the player and enemy support and terrain bonuses, as well as battle skills. What? So it basically evens the playing field. Negates both the player and the enemy's support... And terrain bonuses. Like, they don't get terrain bonuses, they don't get things like Wrath or whatnot, but the enemy doesn't doesn't either. So if you give that to a character that has no skills, and they uh, favor, like, going in and, like, uh, not robbing the enemy of their uh, bonuses, and they don't personally don't need it, then I guess that works? It's it's like a... You know the skill, uh, Nihil? Nihil? 
Nihil? Uh, Nile, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, this is like Diet Nile. Okay. Okay, we got, uh, we got knights over, or we got, uh, warriors over here. Oh, Lord, no. But we can get Ike here to intercept them. You know what else I watched while uh, I was sick? Um, uh, miniseries, uh, The Night Manager. Good show. I have not, I have not heard of that one, actually. Uh, Hugh... Oh, that's a killer lance. Gotta be careful there. Hugh Laurie and Tom Hiddleston. Huh. Good, good English actors being witty in English. Ooh. Okay, I um, like the idea. Um, yeah, if I can, like, I don't want to... I don't want to chance that killer axe, but if I can take can initiate combat against that killer axe, he can yeah. take care of these other soldiers easily. Yeah, you just don't want to give him the first move. Exactly. Alright, so Volk's there. Um, do we want to just break down this door? We have we have so many units that we can do it. Small idea. Yeah. What if we use um Kieran to pick up Volk and drop him closer to the door so next Oh well next turn he's gonna reach anyway. Yeah, you're right. I say we just break it down so we can speed this up. Okay. Maybe have Boyd do it because he's got a lot of uh, strength. Yeah, clear the room out before we um, keep moving forward. We also got a room next to it. Oh, you know, we should have done it with Oscar because Oscar could have moved out of the way. Yeah, you're right. Well. Uh, Soren? I know axes do the most damage against structures. Oh, kills me seeing you use up brave bows on this. It's fine. Uh, no enemies. Huh. Okay. Uh, you want to head to the next one down yeah. the line? Yeah, I don't want to break it yet, but I am going to proc this dude okay. with someone. Uh, let's have Miss do it. Just want to make sure yeah, that, that Archer can, Archer reach, can, can reach. reach. Yeah, no Actually, good. his range is farther. Long, longbow. Better yeah, longbow. Range. So I'm going to have uh, I'm gonna have Gatry proc him, and then we can go from there. Uh, you're killing me, Nephany. Snoozing away down there. Who's our big snooze lord in the Blazing Sword Let's Play? Was it Dart? It was Dart! Yeah, that time Dart fell asleep and was still dodging everything. Yeah, no, it was totally dark. Like Yeah, like he it was it was it would have been preferable if he wasn't asleep, but Dart like all of a sudden woke up and he was like a bear woken up from hibernation. <laughs> yeah. Like good lord, that was ludicrous. Oh, I want to give a plug by the way. That reminds me. Um Yes. Uh Zafer Revolution, guys, if you're not subscribed, get on that. Um great content creator. He just did a review of uh, yeah, I did. I did see that actually. Uh, of Fire Emblem Blazing Sword, uh, he actually uh, uses a clip of us in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, actually, actually, he messaged me specifically to uh, uh, to ask permission for that. Yeah, yeah. Like he actually wanted to get my uh, my permission to use our footage of that, and I was like, dude, by all means. Yeah, yeah. He, he asked me too, just because my voice was in the clip he used. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna, I'm he, gonna, didn't, he didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Um, that's another thing, by the way. Um, that uh, I'm totally de he leveled up from getting hit with an arrow. Um, I when it comes to footage, you're getting footage and using other people's footage. I'm gonna be I'm gonna say straight up. I'm one of those guys who does not mind whatsoever if people use my footage. Like if it's something that I created, like full stop, super created, like heavily, and it's like, oh, this is a piece of art or whatnot. Then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe ask me for my permission, and I obviously do that for music as well. But if I'm just doing gameplay stuff and people want to use my gameplay footage, then, like, I'm not going to give a crap. Yeah. And that's why it annoys me, like, when I'm collecting footage and everyone, and, like, people are suddenly being, like, uh, how do I put it? Um, and, like, people put, like, people, uh, upload videos of, like, cutscenes and, like, super moves and whatnot, and they have a freaking watermark on there, and I'm like, guys, this doesn't belong to you. Take the watermark off. You're not proving anyone, any... You're not claiming huh. ownership of anything to anyone. I mean, especially if it's a cutscene. Especially if it's a cutscene. Oh my god, that drives me so nuts because it slows down my production because I gotta collect footage and I have to either look for someone else's footage 
to uh, that they don't mind me using to download or crop out the watermark myself. And I hate doing that. See, when I do the character studies, I credit everywhere that I get footage from because mm -hmm. that's just the way I want to do that because I want to treat it like a research paper, like a bibliography. Yeah, obviously. But, at this, but like, it's like if you're... I, I'm not... I don't feel like doing that for a countdown when uh, I have like... 10 different franchises that I got to cover and I collected footage from like over a hundred different sources. I'm not doing that. If, if somebody was making a video on like Wargroove and they wanted to use my Wargroove Let's Play, I wouldn't mind them doing that even if they didn't credit me. Yeah. I guess where I would draw the line is like, if somebody used like my last character study, the video, like, the part where I did the big Charizard montage where I, like, worked really hard on that. Yes. Then I would, like, want at least a mention. That's where, that's where I would be like, okay, yeah, maybe do a little mention here because that's stuff that you actually took the time to edit. Yeah. That's that, the stuff that you took the time to, like, carefully put everything together. That feels like my work. Yeah, yeah, like, carefully place everything. But if you're just slapping a cutscene onto a video and just uploading that, don't claim it as your own, guys. Don't watermark that. That's, like, it's annoying. Like, I, I hate to say it, but it's annoying. Did you hear about the case? This was, um, this was years ago. Um, but, so there is a, uh, video some Let's Player was playing, uh, Tecmo Super Bowl on the NES. Yeah. Um, now, the show Family Guy had a gag where they, where Peter Griffin was playing Tecmo Super Bowl. And yeah. for the gag, they actually had gameplay of it on, like, on Peter's TV. Like, they actually just, they, they didn't animate it, they just took actual gameplay footage. Right. Um, and it turns out that Fox, or whoever, used this footage, they took it from this Let's Play, uh -huh. um, without asking them. Which, I mean is kind of a legally um, vague subject of whether or not you should be able to do that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> the really crappy part of it is this ended up with that Let's Play of Tecmo Bowl getting taken down because YouTube thought that they stole footage from Family Guy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. That's where that's where things may want... That's where action may want to be taken on Wouldn't you aspects. be so mad? See, like, I wouldn't mind if Family Guy used my footage. In fact, I'd be like, oh, cool, they used my footage and whatnot. But if my videos got taken down as a result because, like, YouTube thought I stole it, I'd be like, okay, that's... That's gonna make me a little bit upset. Yeah, like, if an actual, like syndicated show use a clip for my YouTube channel, I wouldn't shut up about it. I would be telling everybody, like, guys, guys, look! Yeah, seriously, though. I'm on TV! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, but that's... Oh, that's so bad. I, I don't know whatever resolved with that, but that, that was, like, a small, stupid legal battle. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like, I will say this. Like, don't... Take my... Like with everything, guys, take my words with a grain of salt. Like, at the end of the day, context is a beautiful thing. Yeah, we'd have to get a legal eagle up in here, and we don't know him. <laughs> he is much more famous than us. Uh, he's all the way in Washington, D.C. I, I, I really like watching legal eagle. I like if legal eagle. If only, if only because he puts a lot of really good perspective on things that I would my, I myself would not be, would not even begin to understand had I not had some context. Yeah, law's complicated. Yeah, and like I really like watching him because he actually helps me put the law into. He puts the law into words I can understand, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, law is hard. My, my sister's a lawyer. She's way smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. My aunt's a lawyer, and I'm like, how do you know all this? Like, this is way more complicated than I would want it to be by any stretch. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can get the credit. Did you know uh, Charles Zarley in... Wait, that's not his first name. We always just called him Zarley. Uh, in what, high school? Uh, it, uh, he went to Temple. I wasn't super close friends with him, but, uh, Allie and Dylan were. Um, can't say I, can't uh, say I have, sorry. no. I, I had what's a different... Your, what's your first name, Zarley? Anyway, he's a I, lawyer now. Right. I had, a, I had a different circle of friends compared to, uh, uh, compared to Allie and Dylan in, uh, Temple. Yeah, I know. Um, so I was just thinking maybe <clears throat> you knew him. But, uh, yeah, he does, like, entertainment law now. Interesting. Yeah, he passed the bar and everything. Well, congratulations to him. Uh, Zarley, if you're watching this, and I highly doubt you are, um, congrats, dude. I would be very surprised if you are watching this and you're a lawyer, put in the comments that you're a lawyer. I'm just really curious if any lawyer 
making lawyer money would spend time <laughs> watching our Let's Play. Yeah, hey, like, if you guys, uh, yeah, like, uh, I don't know. I'm you, very curious. If you guys, uh, study, if you guys, uh, practice law, then yeah, go ahead, like, put it in the comments. How many, I have, now you got me curious. How many lawyers are How actually lawyers? watching us? Um, I know there was this one dude, um, uh, who, uh, commented on Twitter. Uh, he was a voice actor. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a voice actor who did some work for Cuphead for, I think, Warner? Didn't, didn't, um, what's-his-name from No Straight Road show up in one of your streams? Uh, yeah, he actually, uh, the voice actor for Zook. Yeah. Uh, showed up during one of my streams that I did for No Straight Roads. Amber and I were doing the Christmas, uh, boss fights. Like, how rad is that? Like, how, like that was really cool, and, uh, the, uh, voice actor for DJ Subatomic Supernova followed me on Twitter. And I was like... That's very, very cool. It, it was sick. And he actually, like, we were having this, like, interesting conversation about, like, the different, like, messages of, like, or, like, what they were trying to convey in No Straight Roads and everything. And it was actually a really cool conversation to have with him. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, it's just these two. Yeah, I'm just gonna end for now. That also makes me nervous sometimes when we're writing countdowns if I, like, ever, like, insult a game. Or I, I'm always trying to be careful. Ah, damn it. Boyd's asleep now. Dang. I'm always trying to be careful not to insult, or, or like, never to make things about individuals if I'm, like, critiquing a game and stuff. Because I'm always just a little bit afraid that they're going to see it. <laughs> How are we doing, Ike? I'm doing pretty good. Ike is doing perfectly fine. All right, we got more reinforcements. All right, Nephany's back up. But just, like, imagine, like, doing a stream of, like, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and at the beginning being like, wow, that scream was really awkward. Like, wow, Rex's voice actor is so bad. And then, like, Rex's voice actor shows up in the stream. Oh my gosh, um, dude. Um, I don't remember who voiced her, but some people were pretty damn insulted when I uh, talked about Sherry of Barnes' voice in our hate, in our uh, hate to love video. Yeah. Ooh! Who, who voiced Sherry of Barnes again? It, it, uh, it's, we'll a voice it it's a voice actress I'm really, really big fan of. And I was like, oh my god, she voiced her? Oh gosh. Oh yeah, that's Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey, that's it. And I was like, oh my gosh, Laura Bailey did this? Oh dear. I mean, there's a difference between saying this character's voice is annoying and I think this voice actor is untalented. Yeah, no, Laura Bailey. You were like, saying the former. Yeah, no, like I don't. I, straight up, I think I think Sherry Barnes's voice is not that great, or at least not for me anyway. Like I find it annoying, but I cannot <clears throat> I cannot stress enough how much I love Laura Bailey as a voice actress. I I we put her on the voice actor on the voice actress uh, voice actors countdown for Pete's sake. I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that there's actually a notation in scripts for, like, English scripts for anime and stuff like that. Really? There's, like, a written notation they'll write in for the voice actors of how to do, like, certain, like, squeeze of anime girls. Really? I watched an interview with a voice actor once talking about this, of, like, there's a notation of, like, you know, sometimes it'll specify in the script that they want to, like, oh, ah! But sometimes they want to, like, oh, ah! And it's, like, talking about, like, the notation. Is that so? I don't know if it's true. Oh, goodness. It's just something I heard that I find very amusing. I mean, voice act, like, voice acting is, like, an art. Let's, let's be real for a moment. Totally. I, totally I'm still, I am still not over the genius that they did with Groot. And that, like, his entire, like, he was given uh, two scripts. And it was like, one of them is just a bunch of, I am Groot. I am Groot. But, I am Groot. But the other script was what Groot was actually trying to say. So, uh, who voiced him again? Uh, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, yeah. So Vin Diesel actually was prompted to um, say the line, I am Groot. With the inflection of what Groot was actually trying to say. Yes. And that was... And I thought that was genius. Because you'll be watching... Um, in the first scene with Rocket and Groot... Uh, Groot's, like, drinking from the fountain in the in the city square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rocket's like, hey, told you not to drink out of there. And he, I am Groot. And Rocket's like, no, I, j I just saw you. So, like, on the script... <laughs> 
It's like, next no, to I am Groot, instead it would say, like, I didn't, or something like that. Right, it's like, hey, stop drinking from the fountain. I am Groot. <laughs> I wasn't I... drinking from the fountain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally saw you. Oh my god. Yeah, no, it, like... Like, um... You ever watch Star Wars Rebels? Um, yes. Uh, Chopper. Very little bit of it. I think they also do that with Chopper, because if you... A lot of times you can kind of guess what Chopper is supposed to be saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Ch Chopper's the R2-like robot. Yeah. Uh -huh. The R2-D2 stand-in. I think, I think Chopper was also the name of one of the clones, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Uh... The name Chopper does come from something, but I don't remember what. There is a behind-the-scenes, like, origin to that name. Mm hmm I can't remember now. Um, I know the name Kira, which is the girl from Solo, yeah. was originally a name that George Lucas had planned to use if he ever wrote an Episode 7. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Fun fact. Goodness gracious, Volk, you you walk so fast. Using that chess key, nice. Might as well. Talisman. All right, cool. Talisman, not important. <laughs> uh, the Adventures of Jackie Chan was a great show. Okay, question for you. Yes. Uh, what was the best talisman? Ooh. If you can only have one, what talisman would you want? Oh, man. Um, okay, I need a refresher because I don't remember all of them. What did all the talismans do? Okay, um, rooster was levitation. Yes. Ox was strength. Uh, snake was invisibility. Rabbit was speed. Rat was motion to the motionless. Like, reanimation. Right. Um, sheep was astro projection. Horse was healing. Um, dog was immortality, and they were they did not work the same way. Like, was it immortality or invulnerability? Yes, it was both. Got you. Yeah, the dog would make you immune to harm, but the horse could actively heal you. Ah, okay, gotcha. Um, and also repair structures. They used it to fix a, a hole in a ship once. That's right. That's um, right. I remember that. Uh, the monkey was animal transformations. The tiger split you into two, and they would be good and evil. Um, the dragon let you shoot fire from your hands, and the pig gave you heat vision. That's right. Huh. If I had to choose one... I know it was painted as useless most of the time, but I always thought having the sheep talisman and being able to astro project would be a really neat thing to have. Um, that would that would be that would make a that would make for some great theater. Yeah. Um, if I had to choose one, I on I think I would choose the rabbit. Yeah, rabbit's great. Like rabbit super, super speed, speed, like wonderful, like absolutely wonderful. All right, got a bit of a situation here. Um. I kind of overshot Gatry, so we got no one to defend here. Oh, no. But we sh I should be able to handle this, honestly. Uh, what if you attack with Oscar, Kanto him back, and um, then move him again with Raisin so we can attack somebody again? Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to take this guy out, because he's weak. Yeah, okay. Unnecessary, but at least it's a confirmed hit. Man, we got into a situation talking about the talismans. Talismans aren't important. Uh, what if... How far can you move, uh... Nephany? See, what I was thinking was you, you should have moved Oscar back after you made that attack, oh. and then you could have used Grayson and had Oscar come in you're right, and you're attack right. again. But okay, um, maybe we can bring Nephany up, use Grayson to get her the rest of the way, mm -hmm. and do some kind of blocking that way. Because we also gave Nephany the provoke skill. That's true. So maybe that'll distract enough? Oh, 
Also, maybe Mist can get up there and throw an attack in. No, not quite. Not quite, no. Although, given her power, she might actually be able to kill, but I don't know if I want to risk that. Yeah, especially since that's a short spear. Um, mm -hmm. No, I think Nephany's our best bet. Uh, maybe, yes, yeah, so that we don't have to move racing quite as far. Yeah. Yeah, Talisman's not important. I'm willing to go for the luck. Go for the if luck? She, if she gets a crit, that's yeah. that's safety for us. Yeah, she gets two chances at it, so... 